Hold 
saw my enemies sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder, my weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder, cause heaven comes to fight for me. Oh, sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief Sing a little louder My weapon is a melody We'll sing a little louder Heaven comes to fight for me We'll sing a little louder Cause I'm gonna sing In the middle of this storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are still, when striving sin. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ, I'll stand. Oh, in Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in hell, let's pay this gift of love. And righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ, I live. ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain and bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for I am Born with the precious blood of Christ. Ooh, no guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man Could ever pluck me from his hand Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I'll stand No power of hell, no scheme of man Could ever pluck me from his hand till he returns 
Oh, calls me home here in the power of Christ. I'll stand. Thank you, God. Yours is the victory. Solid rock on which we stand. Who else would rocks cry out to worship? Whose glory taught the stars to shine? Perhaps creation longs to have the worst to see, but this joy is mine. With a thousand hallelujahs, we magnify your name. You alone deserve. Jesus, this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs, and a thousand more. Who else would die for our redemption? Whose resurrection means our rights? Every in time enough to sing of all you've done but I have eternity to try with a thousand hallelujahs we magnify your name you alone deserve the glory the honor and the praise Lord Jesus this song is forever a thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more. We give you our hallelujah, Jesus. You may be all we've got to give, all we've got to love. the Lord, to the Lamb, to the King of heaven, praise, for He rose, now He reigns, we will sing forever, praise, to the
This song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs, and a thousand more. A thousand hallelujahs, and a thousand more. Hallelujah. Our hearts to you, Jesus, and we lift our song, we lift our cry. Addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is love. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Oh, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Oh, oh, the fear and all anxiety to every soul hell can. Stronghold shine through the shadows. The 
Father, thank you that we have sung of who you are, been reminded of the extraordinary nature of your grace, knowing that in Jesus we had someone who did not count equality with God something to be held on to, but took became a human being, took the form of a servant, was obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Therefore you, Father, have highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow Every time confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit would deepen our understanding of those extraordinary truths and your amazing love. I pray, draw us deeper into you. Amen. Hallelujah.
Well, welcome, Sir Margaret. It's great to see you, and thank you for coming, and thank you, too, for those of you who are joining us online. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, Tom and the band, for leading us in worship. We'll be back to you at any moment now, I think most people are feeling, so I know the pressure is on for me not to talk for very long. But it's great to see you, and now Alex, if he's still here. Alex, <laughs> hiding at the back. Do come and read to us uh, from 2 Timothy. A reading is taken from second letter of Timothy, chapter 4, reading from verses 9 to 13. And I read, Do your best to come quickly, for Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, and Titus to the Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, because he is helpful to me in my ministry. Verse 12. I sent Titus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, and my scrolls, especially the parchment. This is the word of God. Amen. On Sunday, we had a great service with our partner church here in London, uh, in St. Margaret's, rather, which is, of course, in London. <laughs> you can see I'm seeing the bigger picture today, so I've got to get back to the immediate. Great service in church, and I thought I was like, go home to lunch, and suddenly realized, because I'd been working on Saturday, there was no food at home apart from the fruit and fiber, and I'd already had that for breakfast. I thought probably even in Lent, Fruit and fiber for Sunday lunch was probably not the most ideal uh, and uh, uh, ideal festival meal. So I popped off to M&S in, uh, in, uh, in, in Cheapside, and as I was coming back, I suddenly heard in Cheapside on Sunday, it was actually absolutely quiet, no traffic, hardly anyone was. I heard this voice that said, Jeremy, have you been shopping on a Sunday? And instinctively, I looked upwards because it just came, this great booming voice. It was actually uh, the vicar of St. Mary Le Beau uh, in Cheapside. After all, he'd just been taking a service at the other end of the road. It was there in his long black cassock, looking like some 19th century French priest returning. I said, I have, actually, thinking I mustn't sound defensive, and I'm already sounding defensive. I said, have you been to church? He said, yes. He said, I tend to on a Sunday. It's what clergy do. He said, have you? I said, oh, yes, very exciting. He said, I don't really approve of exciting services. I thought, well, that puts me in my place. I said, was it very dull? He said, um, well, you would find it so, but to a mature Catholic, he'd have, you'd have loved it. So I said, oh, yes, 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 I will do one day. I suddenly thought, why am I feeling like this? Because I've been to M&S on a Sunday. <laughs> now, this extract from Paul's uh, letter is a wonderful reminder, and I wish I'd had it in my mind, or at the forefront of my mind on Sunday, that Jesus recognizes and encourages to be us to be honest about those aspects of our life which might not seem particularly spiritual uh, at any given moment. No one could think of the Apostle Paul as a spiritual lightweight, and he'd underlined that a few sentences earlier in his letter to Timothy. He said he looked back on his life and realized that he'd, he'd fought the good fight, run the race, and kept the faith. He looked back and thought, I've been really amazing, actually. Then he looked forward and was confident that one day soon, uh, Jesus would give him a crown of life when they met face to face. 
the crown of righteousness uh, when they encountered one another. But at that, that moment, he had more pressing and slightly less holy concerns, and he was totally honest about them in this letter. First, he wrote, he was missing his friends, the people he could trust, who made his life so much more enjoyable. A couple of sentences after he recalled how, how at his trial before Nero, his first trial before Nero, none of his Christian friends had stood by him at all. It had underlined to Paul how much he needed his friends. It was because of that he wrote to Timothy in verse 9, do your best to come to me quickly. Don't get sidetracked, don't get distracted. I need to see you fairly soon. Luke was there, of course, with him. Faithful Luke. But for Paul at that moment, Luke's presence wasn't sufficient. He hoped Mark would come too because Mark had been so helpful time after time down the years. Paul might have been a spiritual giant, but he really needed his friends and at no time more so than when things were difficult. He also needed those small things that would improve the quality of his life. We see in verse 12 that unsurprisingly he wanted that heavy winter cloak that he'd left behind in Troas. He wanted his books and his notebooks too. He was clearly bored in that imperial prison in central Rome. And this insight into what Paul wanted at that particular moment. These details of how he felt this giant of the faith as he was there in prison encourages you and me to be honest about what we need in life at any particular time. On Sunday for me, it was a Marks and Spencer's macaroni cheese. Do you know, in the final song, I suddenly felt so unholy I am. I want a Marks and Spencer, not a Waitrose. Yeah. <laughs> On Sunday, it was a Marks and Spencer's macaroni cheese. Thank you. <laughs> that, of course, now is the trendy way to say hallelujah, by the way. Come on! <laughs> Marks and Spencer's macaroni and cheese, followed by a Yo Valley rhubarb yogurt. I was thinking about it all through that final song, trying to suppress that unworthy vision, but it kept popping back. And each of us, of course, for each of us, those moments will be different, what we need. It may be at the moment something at work you really need God's help about. Maybe you need something at home in the family that actually is just at the back of your mind all the time. Maybe a job we'd like to get, which we know is coming up, a promotion that actually we feel we deserve. It could be a colleague that we're finding difficult and we'd like to get on with better. All the little things in life, but they're very real at any particular moment. Of course, sometimes when we stand back, we think that's fairly minor in the big picture of what's happening in the world. But nonetheless, it matters to me now. And Paul's example uh, in those few sentences we heard read to us calls us to be honest with ourselves, with others, and with the Lord Jesus. But how could Paul be so confident? As he looked back, he saw how time after time God had been faithful. And only a week or two earlier, 
when everyone had let him down and uh, run for cover, he found, as we read a few sentences later, the Lord stood by my side and gave me strength. We've no more details of his experience that day. Uh, We can be sure that it wasn't a great public experience of the Holy Spirit. But for Paul, it was life transforming. Jesus knew exactly what he needs. An honesty in my prayer and an expectancy of what Jesus can do. So the band comes forward now, and after we're going to have a song, and then James is going to lead us in prayer ministry. Just say, let me be honest, Lord, about what's on my mind now, about what I'd want, what I'm anxious about. Just be completely honest with him, and he will draw close to you by your spirit, by his spirit. Friends, quite a lot to uh, unpack out of Jeremy's message today. Um, it's one thing for me, I felt suddenly convicted. And I wondered if it is dishonoring to God, dishonoring to God when we don't bring the small things to Him. I felt the Lord saying, James, who are you to decide what matters? what's worthy, what's holy. God says, I am the creator, the source of all things. We are invited to bring everything to him. It's not down to us to pick and choose and think what's worthy and what's not worthy. Everything matters to God. 
we're given an opportunity to make everything holy before God. So can I just pray that we could release that and know that everything matters to the Lord. Father, we thank you so much that you care about us. We confess time that there are times, Lord, when we just think we don't want to bother you with small things or that it is not worthy. But I pray that you would reveal to us that indeed everything matters to you, Father, and that we want every aspect of our lives to be interwoven with you. Thank you, Father, that you are the source and the creator of all things. And Lord God, may we welcome and worship the opportunity to speak to you at all times about all things because it all matters. And that you give us the opportunity to turn seemingly unimportant things into holy matters and conversations of grace and love. So release us in that, Lord God, and may we moment by moment, day by day, welcome the opportunity to bring everything before you through your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, guys, I'll be up front to pray. If there's any prayer issues or matters, please do come forward. There'll be others. We'd love to pray for you. Um, bring everything to God. God bless you.
turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. And through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. Your work is finished, the end is written. Oh, Jesus Christ, my living. can fathom some boundless grace the God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross is spoken I am forgiven the king of kings called Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Oh, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh, hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. This salvation in Jesus Christ, my living hope. You're the hope of the world. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Silence, the roaring lion declare the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to breathe.
it's impossible for you Oh 
praise you again and again. With all I have in this living, yeah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much. I've nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart. say 